Good morning, this is Business Leaders with Georgi Burduli. Our sponsor is Eurocredit, and today I have a very special guest, partner at 500 Global, Pedro Vieira. Pedro, hello, welcome to the show. Thank you for hosting me. So, um, your career and your experience is very interesting to us. Uh, let's begin from the beginning. Like, what was your first job when you graduated? And what, what did you actually study? Well, you know, it's funny you ask because not, not that many people know, but I'm actually trained as an environmental engineer. Really? <laughs> and, and my first company was, uh, was in the space of environmental engineering and digital health. But my, my first job really was at university. So I studied at the university and then started teaching as a lecturer there. And I went to the US to get a PhD and continue my life in academia. It was only after that I started my life in entrepreneurship. Yeah. So how did you discover entrepreneurship? So after grad school, uh, I decided I wasn't going back to academia as a faculty, as a lecturer. So I had to take other jobs, and first I was a management consultant for a bit, and then a, f a professor of mine from Berkeley decided to start a company and was inviting two or three grad students to help him with things that he needed. So I joined four, four people, him and two more grad students, and we launched the company in Silicon Valley. That was the beginning of my journey. So you started a business with your lecturer? Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so interesting. So let me ask you, wh why did you leave your career in, in academia? What was the reason for that? Yeah, I wanted, to be honest, to be doing something that were, was m immediately more applied to the societal needs. More practical. More practical. I, I really like knowledge transmission uh, and that's why I like programs like the ones we're doing here in Georgia. I like to teach but I didn't want to teach full time and so I decided that going and building a company was more interesting. Yeah I'm the same way I've been teaching for a while so I, I fully understand. So who is a great entrepreneur in your opinion? Yeah uh, well it has to be someone that has like a, a restless mind. You're never happy with the status quo, you're trying to find new things new ways of making old things, right? So that's the first thing. You, you, you have to be unhappy with the status quo. Then you have to be very driven. I mean, building new things or changing the status quo is very hard. So you have to be driven, you have to, be, you have to persevere. You have you to have, push hard. You right? have to push hard, you have to persevere, and you have to be uh, fungible. You have to be able to adapt because however you think you're going to change the world, it's not going to be done that way. It's going to be something else. And you're always being thrown different challenges at you, so you have to adapt. Then you have to, to be able to be a good leader. You're not going to change the world alone, so you need to bring a team with you. So you need to be a good leader, and for that you also need to be a good communicator. You have to be able to express your ideas and what you want to do with what you're building. And, and finally, I think you have to be really, really hard working. I think people have this view that, you know, being a startup or, or being an entrepreneur is very glamorous. It's not. You work 80 hours, 100 hours a week. It's always work, right? So you have to have an unrivaled work ethic to be, to be a successful entrepreneur. So it's all behind the scenes, right? The, the battles are won. Yeah, it's like the, you know, the overnight success that takes 10 years to build. Everyone makes that sharp, right? Exactly. So on that note, like, what is a great startup then? We talked about an entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, so it, it is uh, something that brings all these traits that we just talked about for, for an entrepreneur. But then with a few more, I think good companies are companies that have, as a, as a company, as a team, immediately a clear vision of where they want to go, uh, but based on what they know about their customers. I mean, we know from hundreds of studies that 90% or 80%, a very high number of companies fail because there's no market need for what they're trying to build. So good companies are companies that from day one have a very good understanding of who their customer is, what's their profile, why they're buying their product or why they're buying their service. That's one thing. The second thing is they have to be able to execute very, very well in very efficiently. Everyone, is say, everyone says something that's 100% true, which is ideas are worth nothing, execution is worth everything. So the team has to execute well. Then they have to have the ability to create a very good team spirit. Startups don't have a lot of resources. It's usually very few people trying to solve big problems. If they are not able to work as a team cohesively, not going to go anywhere. 
And then finally, they have to be very smart about their finances. They don't have enough right. capital to change the world, right? So they have to know their numbers very well. And the, they have to be very good at knowing the cost of doing business. It's very easy to get a million users in your platform if you, be, if you buy 10 bucks a, a, a user to go there, right? That's too expensive, right? That's too expensive, exactly. So it, they have to be very good knowing their finance and how much it costs to, to do business for them. So what about great teams then? Like uh, you, you, you mentioned leadership a couple minutes ago. Well, who, first of all, who is a great leader? I mean, in terms of values, in terms of traits, what do you think? Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's a really good question. I think that you, you, you can define it in many different ways. Definitely, it has to be someone that is able to share uh, his or her vision very clearly to others and have them understand their vision and want to follow and participate, not follow, but actually participate and do right. the journey of building something together with that leader. Um, so in that sense, it has to be a good communicator. I think the, the good leaders are those that understand that they don't know it all. And to the part of your question, which is about teams, and we see this frequently, is teams that they have to have complementary skills. And often uh, you have founders that are super deep technically, and they, right. know, understand, they understand the technology better than anyone in the world, but then they have significant gaps on the commercial side. It's like they build a technology and then they're looking for a problem that can be solved with it. Right? They have no customers. So they have no customers. Some, are, it's totally the opposite. Sometimes you have teams that are business people. They're super understand, understandable of the market, but they don't understand the technology that's required to address that market. So a team is, a good team is a team that brings those two together. We, we need synergy, right? Exactly. So one of the biggest problems in Georgia, well, challenges in Georgia is that, uh, you know, those people cannot really find each other or do not know about the need to find each other uh -huh. right so I mean what is the common practice of finding team members I mean let's say I'm a great visionary guy but I, I have no information about technologies and on, on the contrary as well so mm -hmm. how does that really happen like there's different ways the problem is solved in other markets uh, there's obviously the the technology platforms that help with matchmaking and whatnot in the acceleration or in the pre-acceleration world, which is programs where we train entrepreneurs, some programs are focused on matching co-founders, for example. Uh, and then there's the events and the networking. And I think, honestly, in this market, this is what's more useful at this point is there's a lot of events that are focused on different themes around technology or business development. Going there, meeting more people, getting the word out that you're working on an idea is always the best way to start. And the critical part here is not to be uh, private about the idea. I think right. a lot of people think that they need to hide their idea from others or it's going to be stolen. That's a big one. Yeah. Yes. And so to our point of ideas versus execution, it's silly to not tell your idea to other people. Is when you share the idea with others, they will understand and they will decide if they want to join your journey. And that's how you find co-founders. Yeah. Right. So why do startups fail most of the time? What is the biggest, like, yeah. maybe top three? I mean, just there's, one, there's a compilation of studies and all of them, the top three are different meanings for there's no market need. Right. In, in, in honestly, after that you have poor execution and poor cash management. And after that, you may have economic impacts or market-driven factors like, you know, the economy collapses, COVID kicks in and things like... Right, externalities. Externalities, if you will, exactly. Uh, but honestly, 80 plus percent is because no one wants that problem. No one wants to pay enough to solve the problem that the company is solving. Or pay it all. Yeah, or <laughs> pay it all. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe. So what about uh, your own uh, problems, failures maybe in your career? Yeah. Can you tell well, us one? It's one exactly, exactly one of those. I mean, we, we built a company, it was called Good Guide, and we were helping people buy uh, healthier and more sustainable products. This was like 20 years ago, roughly. Right. So we thought that if we told people the bad things that go into their products, their shampoo or their food, people would stop buying them. That was clearly the wrong assumption. They needed other 
pieces of information before they decided if they wanted to consume something. So basically our mistake was to assume that because we wanted to, to live a healthy living that others would and at that time you know and still today unfortunately people still decide based on dollar value largely and how much something costs. And so we built something for a market that wasn't there yet and it took us many years, many iterations to get to something that was actually sellable. Luckily we did and we were lucky enough that we had investors in our on board with us that had deep pockets and they, right. they sponsored this long journey of discovery. But definitely there, it was our mistake initially to think that everyone would immediately jump on the bandwagon and buy our product. And that was not the case. We had to find other ways to make money. Right, right. So at the end, I also want to ask you about Georgia. So as I know, you're from Portugal, right? Yes. So how do you like it here? And what's different about Georgia? Uh, you know, it, it, there's a lot of simula similarities between Georgia and Portugal, in a way. Uh, I share this all the time with my friends. Uh, but in general, without making this about Portugal, but more about Georgia, Georgia is, is, uh, is a very... Uh, friendly country, very welcoming to many other re religions, cultures, and societal habits, and that makes it that's very important for for people building startups. You need all sorts of talent, so you need an environment where people feel included and and accepted. So that's kind of the foundation, right? right. Then you have a good layer of technical talent. There are some gaps on the commercial side, as there are in many other emerging or developing markets. It's not unique to Georgia. It's a challenge that can be addressed, and entities like 500 and others are working towards, towards that. Um, then you have another good thing, and that's a similarity to Portugal, is very small domestic market. Right. So you have founders that are super driven from day one. They understand, if I want to make something big, I have to be focused globally, right? I have to be thinking globally. So they test things in Georgia, which is actually a good thing. It's like a lab. It's easy to work with the leading brand, bank, telco, health company. And then once the product is validated, you can immediately go and sell in other countries. So that's really good. It's like the limitations of the domestic market become a motivation to get to the global markets. Um, and I think the, the combination of all, those thing, of all these things make it very interesting to to accelerate companies out of Georgia. That's one of the main reasons why 500 Global decided to come to Georgia and do 500 Georgia here, is because we see that 500, that Georgia has this, this environment of, in the characteristics that can make it a, a tech hub as the government so wants to. Right, so what are your future plans and challenges here and, and globally? Yeah, I mean, we, our plans are long term. So. We are formally committed to four years of investing in training companies, but we don't go into a region just for, for two years or four years. So this is just the start. Uh, in fact, it's not the start because we did another project before this one. We did a project before already in a partnership with, with uh, the government through GITA and with the Bank of Georgia. So these four years are already a continuation of that. And we expect that to extend for many years to come. Uh, we will certainly train and invest in more than 100 companies. We already did so with uh, close to 40, and we'll extend that number. So we're here to stay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your interview, and I wish you best of luck with your future endeavors. Thank you so much, and thank you for hosting me.